Test one, two, three, one, two, three, test one, two, three.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the City of Hamilton and Hamilton Wentworth District School Board Liaison Committee. Um, my name is Don Danko, and I'll be chairing the meeting today. As this is a joint committee, I did want to start us off in a good way with our land acknowledgement from the Hamilton Wentworth District School Board. Uh, we do acknowledge that within the city of Hamilton, we are present on ancestral Anishinaabeg and Haudenosaunee Confederacy land as determined by the Dish with One Spoon Treaty. And the intent of this agreement is for all nations sharing this territory to do so responsibly, respectfully, and sustainably in perpetuity. And I just wanted to start us off uh, with that front of mind as we are um, always need to be mindful of our responsibilities as treaty partners. With that, I would like to call our meeting to order, their first meeting since last year, uh, and we have a number of new members. Uh, I'll just remind everyone in the room, if you can switch your electronic devices to a non-audible function, I think I have to do that for one of mine, and uh, that, that will just help us not have disruptions to the meeting. We do have quorum present, so I'll just acknowledge that um, myself, as one of the committee members, is here um, for HWDSB. We have Trustee Paul Tutt present. I see Councillor Beatty and Councillor Tattison as committee members. We are expecting Trustee Dahab as our third member for HWDSB, and and we have regrets from um, Mayor Horvath. But before we begin, we do have a number of new faces, and this is the first time this uh, committee is meeting this term. So I would like to uh, ask everyone to introduce themselves, um, and perhaps you can just share which board you're from. And we'll start with the committee members, and I'd like to go around and allow staff to introduce themselves from both the city and the school board. Um, how about we start with, uh, if you don't mind, we'll start with my fellow trustee, Trustee Tutt. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Trustee Paul Tutt. Uh, I represent Ward 13, uh, the good people of uh, Dundas and West Flamborough. Happy to be part of this committee. Looking forward to uh, engaging with you all and uh, continuing on and doing the good work that this committee, uh, I think, uh, definitely can do. So I'm excited to be part of this process. Thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Beatty. Thank you, Chair Danko. Um, very excited to be here sitting on this side of the aisle. Uh, previously sat on this committee as a trustee. Uh, I think it was the 2015, 2016 year, something like that. And so uh, very, very excited to be here now in this new role as uh, the Council representing Ward 10, which is the communities of Stony Creek, Fruitland and Winona. And uh, excited to um, get the ball rolling. Thank you so much. And if I slip up and throw in a trustee when I'm referring to you, just feel free to correct me. <laughs> I, I anticipate that happening often. Uh, Councillor Tattison. Hi, I'm Mark Tattison. I'm Councillor for Ward 11, and uh, that's Glambrook. I'm a former principal. I started my career with the Hamilton Wentworth District School Board probably about 21 or 22 years ago. I think I started at Dundas District, went up to Bella Clava. I was um, Buchanan Park. I've been at Memorial City, um, finished my career up with uh, C.B. Sterling. And then my last place, sorry, my last place was Glen Echo for seven years, French immersion in the East End. So I've been all over the city, got a good feel for different um, schools and different areas and the needs. And I'm looking forward to serving in the best capacity I can to support education in our city. Thanks. Thank you. And we also have two student trustee members, or sorry, student members who happen to be our incoming student trustees for the next school year. Um, so I'll start with you, Harry, if you don't mind introducing yourself. Hi. Um, hi, everybody. Um, this, this is my first. Oh, hold on. So I'm going to. Oh, there we go. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Harry. Um, I am a Westmount Secondary School student, and I'm uh, going to be one of the student trustees next year. And I am more than um, like more than happy to meet everybody. Um, and yeah, Thomas. Uh, so Thomas Lin, go ahead. Hi everyone, my name is Thomas Lin. I'm also one of the incoming student trustees. I'm very glad that this opportunity uh, was given to me and this is an exciting kind of responsibility that I'm really, really willing to take on and I'm really excited to represent my students at the board and thank you everyone for this opportunity. 
Thank you. And so as I, I think I mentioned, our, our student members are non-voting members but can fully participate in the meeting. We really uh, appreciate you being here. It's been a while since we've had students able to attend since these meetings often happen during school hours. So uh, we're very excited to have you here. We do have a number of staff, both from the city and from the school board. But before I get to those, I just want to acknowledge that we also have uh, Councillor McMeekin and Councillor Wilson here as non-committee members. So welcome. You've got me at a disadvantage because of where you're sitting. So you may have to like make some noise if you need my attention. <laughs> Um, just going through our staff from the city side, we have uh, Lorraine Kohler, who's supporting us um, as the clerk today. Jessica Versailles is supporting all things technical. Um, on the line, I believe, I lost a track of who's online. Um, sorry, can you show me where the participants are? Like, so, is, can you see a list? Ah, there we go. So, I may miss a few people, but um, we are expecting to have Darlene Cole uh, from the real estate section of the city, uh, Cynthia Graham, and I don't have a note for which uh, area you're from, so perhaps if you don't mind unmuting and letting us know uh, what you're supporting from the city. Hi, everybody. Through the chair, I'm Cynthia Graham. I am the Director of Environmental Services, so I represent parks, cemeteries, forestry, horticulture, all things green. Thanks. Thank you. And Darlene, if I can go back to you, I do see you on the list. Uh, I didn't want to call on you if you weren't here. Uh, if you don't mind introducing yourself as well. Good morning to all. It's Darlene Cole. Uh, I'm Acting Manager of Real Estate at the, at the moment. Happy to help all of you. Thank you. Uh, Indra Mahajan. Morning to everyone. Uh, I'm Indra Maharajan, uh, Director for Corporate Facilities and Energy Management with the city. Uh, there was an item about uh, accessing Tim Hortons field. So primarily I'm here to listen and uh, enjoy the conversation and learn a few things. But uh, our manager for the Tim Hortons Stadium, Rob Gatto, is here in case there's some questions around that item. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Heather Harvey. Hi, everyone. Good morning. My name is Heather Harvey, and I'm the manager of our chronic disease prevention program within public health services here at the city. I'm here to speak to the act of sustainable school travel piece. Thank you. And in the room, we also have Chris Herstick, if you don't mind. Good morning. Through the chair, Chris Herstick, director of recreation. Have I missed anyone from the city side? Leah McNamara. Oh, Leah McNamara. Hi there, Leah McNamara, Senior Real Estate Consultant, Corporate Real Estate Office. I work alongside Darlene uh, with a focus on our portfolio of city property. We're good. Okay, thank you. And uh, if, I think a few less people on the on the HWDSB side, but I'll start with our director, Cheryl Robinson Petrazzini. Uh, good morning. Uh, through the chair, I'm just uh, very happy to be here. want to offer a, a warm good morning and greetings to uh, everyone. Um, chair Danko said my last, last name perfectly because she's had almost a year uh, practice. So <laughs> I've uh, been the director of HWDSB since uh, last August 17th, so coming up on a year. Uh, previous to that, experience in the TDSB and previous to that in the province of Manitoba. So it's been uh, a, an incredible first year and really looking forward to working with this committee. And uh, um, once again, good morning and welcome. Thank you. I'll turn things over to our Associate Director, Matthew Gerard. Good morning, folks. Many apologies, I uh, can't get my camera to work this morning. Um, so hopefully I'll get that working throughout the meeting. Uh, my name is Matt Gerard. I'm the Associate Director for uh, Business Services. Uh, I've been with uh, the board for about eight months, uh, having come from Waterloo Region previously. Uh, in a similar capacity at that school board. Looking forward to working with everyone. I think this is a great, uh, a great venue for us to collaborate. And uh, uh, yeah, just uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for welcoming us so kindly. Uh, thank you. We also have Dave Anderson. Uh, good morning, everyone, and, and uh, happy to be here uh, today to support this committee and see some new faces as well as some familiar faces. Uh, so Dave Anderson, uh, Facility Services, Senior Manager uh, at the board. Good morning. 
Uh, thank you, and I believe Sherry online, I don't have your last name in front of me, is uh, with HWSDS, if you don't mind introducing yourself. No problem to you, Madam Chair. I am Sherry Roswell from Student Transportation Services here in Hamilton. I am here today uh, just in case there are questions that come up around how HSR passes are used for our students. Um, I'm formerly from the um, Student Transportation Services of Brant Haldeman Norfolk and have had two exciting years here in the Hamilton region and I look forward to supporting the team. Thank you. Have I missed anyone uh, from either HWDSB or the city? Okay, with that, uh, we'll jump into our meeting. Uh, I'll be looking to the Madam Clerk. Are there any changes to the agenda before we start? There are no changes to today's agenda. Thank you. May I please have a mover and a seconder to approve the agenda as presented in the file that was shared. Thank you, Trustee Tut, seconded by Councillor Beatty. Um, and we will show by Sorry, we will vote by a show of hands for those in opposition. So is anyone opposed? Seeing none, that's carried, thank you. Are there any declarations of conflicts or of interest? Conflict of interest. Seeing none, and we didn't receive any. Um, next, we'll move along to approval of the minutes from the previous meeting, which was September 12th, 2022. I'm looking for a mover and a seconder to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Recognizing I was the only person in attendance. <laughs> but anyone can do that. Uh, no. Sorry, just voting members. Thank you, uh, Councillor Tattison, and uh, seconded by Trustee Tut. Are there any, or is there any discussion on the approval of the minutes? Seeing none, we will vote by a show of hands. For those opposed, is anyone opposed? Thank you, that's carried. Uh, moving on to our business of the day, we have several items before us for discussion. And just a note, um, as we are all new to this committee, and it is a, a joint committee, uh, basically, if we wish to give direction to staff, we will require motions, um, and the clerk will be supporting us with that. For now, we'll begin with our first item, which is 13.1, Bernie Custis Secondary Access to Tim Hortons Field. Uh, we'll be receiving a verbal update, and that was deferred from the September 12th, 2022 meeting. So we don't have a report before us, um, but just looking to the clerk, who will start us off on this? Whoever wishes to speak. Who should be speaking? Okay, we don't have anyone, oh, thank you. Go ahead, Chris. Through the chair, I'll defer to Rob Gatto, who's online, who's the manager of Ber or Bernie uh, uh, Tim Hortons Field. Thank you, Rob, we didn't get to introduce you, so please okay. introduce yourself and then uh, you can jump right in. Okay, through Madam Chair, good morning, everyone. Uh, Councillors, uh, trustees, and City of Hamilton staff. Rob Gatto, manager of sports and entertainment facilities. I manage, uh, all the green space park buildings, cemeteries, bocce, tennis courts, et cetera. Plus uh, the main asset is here, Tim Hortons Field. Um, so the process, we work, our facility coordinator works in conjunction with uh, Bernie Custis, uh, the athletic director uh, every year to uh, book times. So we have two professional organizations here and based on the license agreement there, um, we cannot book anything in the stadium until they, the schedules come out for the Canadian Premier League and the uh, CFL, the Canadian Football League. Uh, but we work very closely with the school board. Um, I, we did have a, a, a year-end community uh, usage report that went in this past March for 2022. Uh, just to recap that, we had a total of uh, 795 hours of uh, community usage such as uh, flag football. So it's all community use other than our two sports teams. And uh, we had provided for the school board, Bernie Custard, there was uh, 466 hours available to them. So it would be most mornings after school um, and so forth. Um, so, but they did cancel some hours, but on an average per year, we're looking at just over 400 hours for uh, Bernie Custis School. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll just 
maybe add a, a few questions here because this did, was deferred from the September 22 meeting, which um, I was had the the uh, privilege to be part of the committee at that time. Um, I know one of the major concerns was ensuring that Bernie Custis has access as much as possible to the field, uh, given that is our, our solution until the Dominion Glass site is developed into a field for the school. Um, do you know, you mentioned, Rob, uh, that you, ha you can't book anything or provide a schedule until you have schedules for uh, the different leagues that use the field. Do you know what the timing of that is and when the school uh, would find out when the field might be available? So through Madam Chair and all the council, school trustees, so presently right now we booked. Our facility coordinator has connected with Bernie Custis. So for 23-24 from August to December, they have booked afternoons only and a total of 64 hours have been booked. So having said that, both schedules, the CFL and, and CPO, Monday to Friday or Monday to Sunday, they practice CPL practices from 8.30 to 10.30. Then the Ticats come on the field at 11 a.m. So the school board would have access to the field mornings for, at 7 a.m. to 8.30. And then after Ticats have left the field weekday after 3 p.m. That's when the Ticats have the field. And then they would have access in the evening, you know, for, you know, football games, soccer games, or facet classes. Thank you for that additional clarity. Um, I just want to check with HWDCB staff, was there any uh, queries or, or updates from our end? I don't see any, so I'll just turn it to community members and, and those who are uh, present as non-voting members um, to see if you have any questions. Trust Councillor Beattie. Thank you, Chair Dan, going through you. Um, I, I don't know if it's appropriate at this time to ask, but uh, perhaps through you, if there's any kind of a status update to our city staff in terms of where we are on the uh, proposed new fields at the glass factory plans. I know that when when Bernie Custis was uh, first uh, planned and, and I was uh, very honored to be part of that process, uh, it was always anticipated that the, the glass factory uh, recreation area would be uh, available for use for the students and here we are a few years later, so I'm just wondering if there's any uh, update that can be provided at this time. Thank you. I'll turn to Cynthia Graham. Thank you. Through the chair, Cynthia Graham, Director of Environmental Services. What I can uh, update the um, members of this committee are that uh, we are working through the process to bring the property up to parkland standards because it was a glass factory there is some remediation and environmental approvals to go through we do anticipate starting the formal risk assessment process uh, shortly and that can take upwards of 18 months to get through although we're hoping for um, more uh, expedient process than that because we have been in conversation with the Ministry of the Environment to date and um, have had their um, input into the process that we followed. Uh, once the tender uh, goes out and is awarded, we do anticipate another 18 months um, to two years for construction. Um, so we can continue to keep this committee um, updated on that progress. And um, if anybody uh, is interested in the meantime, we do update our city uh, web page that's dedicated to this project um, for the full history and information on the project. Thank you. Follow up, Councillor Beatty. Sure, through you, Chair. Just uh, so I think I have my timelines right if we're doing kind of an 18 months plus 18 months plus some redundancy built in there for good measure. Um, we're we're uh, probably looking into a five-year window for some level of completion to get that sports field up and running. Is, are we? I, I'm not going to hold anybody to the timeline, but I'm just trying to see how long the runway is. And if I if I have that relatively correctly, uh, through you to the director. Yeah, through the chair. So if. 
if we're looking at July now, 18 months would get us to the end of 2024 and then uh, full 2024 and into 2025 for construction if all goes well. So we would anticipate sort of open for use um, sometime in 2026. Thank okay, you. thank you. Any further questions or comments on this top topic? Uh, Director Robinson Petzosini. Uh, thank you, and through the chair, the only comment uh, was just to um, acknowledge that access to the field has uh, improved this past year, and just to express our thanks for that. Thank you. Just doing a quick check in the room. Uh, Trustee Tut. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you, just have a, uh, a quick question for uh, Mr. Gatto, if I may. I think I heard that uh, we roughly have about 400 hours uh, for the school to use, um, but it seems like primarily that's either before or after school. So I'm assuming those 400 hours cannot be used or allocated during the day. Is that correct? Thank you. Rob Gatto? Through Madam Chair, uh, that is correct. Although. The Tiger Cats, on the, they do have bye weeks and the Forge travel too, that's the soccer club. So there are times through the day that can be booked, but it would be uh, either last minute. But again, our facility coordinator works with uh, Bernie Custis athletic director, so they communicate pretty regular on a regular basis. So if there's times that come up and, you know, there's times where the school may need it for, uh, you know, a phys ed class, um, so they, you know, with, speak at the last minute and we would make arrangements for them. Thank you. Any follow up, Trustee Tut? Yeah, I'll just uh, throw you, Madam Chair, just a, just a comment. I appreciate uh, that feedback. I mean, that's essentially where I was going. I was thinking about uh, the impact on some physical education classes and I'm, I'm happy to hear that there is um, regular contact between the school and the coordinator uh, yeah. to cover off any bye weeks or available time. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? Okay, not seeing any. Uh, there, I don't believe we have any direction from the committee. This is just an update. Um, so I'll, with that, I can move us along to the next item. I'll note that uh, we'll have a, a vote to receive the information from all three items uh, when we get to the end of those, those items. So for 13.2, we move along to active and sustainable school transportation program update, and that is by public health. Uh, so who'd like to begin that discussion? Heather oh, Heather Harvey, if you would like to kick this off. Of course, good morning everyone through you, uh, Chair Danko. Um, just providing a bit of an update on the active sustainable school travel program. So that program is a program that is operated um, by the city and it's primarily housed and funded in our sustainable mobility group, which is within transportation planning in our planning um, department. Uh, the staff in public health do support that program. I mean, we do work very closely with transportation, um, sorry, with transportation planning, sustainable mobility group. And we have since um, the program came into being, um, I believe so that's sort of in 2009, but since 2012, that program has been housed within the sustainable mobility team within transportation planning. Um, so since um, I'm not sure if this was an update from the pandemic, but uh, the public health has not been or was not involved from March of 2020 through June 2022 or uh, through June 20 May sorry 2022 because of demobilization to our pandemic response but since that time um, we have come staff has been uh, come back to their home base positions and has been resuming work so much of 2022 was spent in planning and recruitment to fill vacancies within that position and have since that time we have rekindled our partnership with transportation planning and been involved in active sustainable school travel work things such as we have been supporting our uh, sustainable mobility group with um, uh, initiatives such as walk and roll events, uh, ASST communication, special area pilot study, um, as well as school travel planning with schools. 
uh, uh, when requested. It, of note, we have been uh, involved with discussions with transportation planning and the daily school route around continued collaborations and next steps. Um, so the school board and Jerry Smith have been involved in those conversations as well. Um, we did have an initial meeting back in the spring and are looking at continuing those discussions um, with another meeting shortly. Um, but just to note that some of our key, uh, some of the key outcomes of our work this past year. So uh, we have followed up on previous school travel plans with eight schools in total, uh, responded to specific school requests at six schools, uh, promoted to all schools, bike to school and walk and roll events, but participated at five in-person events, promoting them specifically, as well as supported our special area pilot, which was around uh, congestion at school arrival and dismissal times, doing biweekly traffic counts, um, and then did some social media promotions and communications, as well as supporting our school public health nurses with ASST resources and promotional materials. So that's just a quick high level update. Um, I did notice on the outstanding business list that there was a mention around um, Metrolink's funding for the ASST program. I just want to note that that funding did, um, it was from 2009 to 2012, um, and since then there has been no further funding from Metrolink's at that. Um, the program has been funded through um, program dollars and operating budgets from both public health and sustainable mobility programs, um, as well as uh, specific grants that have been um, achieved from Healthy and uh, Healthy Kids Community Challenge, as well as the um, OST, which is Ontario Active Sustainable. Oh, now I'm think I'm for saying I think it's Ontario Active School Travel. Um, that's it. Um, I can speak to or answer any questions if there was something that I didn't speak to that people are interested in. Thank you very much. Uh, starting us off, Councillor Beatty. I'm really quick on the trigger here. I'm getting all my hands up first. Um, thank you and through you, Chair. Um, uh, this kind of cycled through Council recently. Um, a similar thing, but it was coming through the, the transportation planning side. Um, and I was reminiscing to my Council colleagues how the current Chair Danko and myself were signatories on the original ASSD charter back in 2015, standing out in front of City Hall on a very cold day. I think I still have a picture of it somewhere freezing our butts off. Um, so this is a, a project that's near and dear to my heart and great to see that public health is uh, kind of rebounding. I know that it's been a challenging time coming through the pandemic to, uh, to kind of piece this back together. Uh, so my question through the chair uh, to Heather, um, first off, uh, thank you that, that this is rebounding, but also I'm I'm curious as to um, how this current iteration works in terms of I'm I'm familiar with how it worked previous to the pandemic when I was on the trustee side. How is the ASSD program now working in collaboration with uh, you? You mentioned DSR. You man, uh, mentioned transportation planning, and then liaising with the HWDSB um, representatives as well. I'm just curious as to the mechanics, um, if a school community was interested and they wanted to uh, try to adopt something. Uh, thank you for that question through the chair. Uh, it's a great question and we're continually in discussions with each other. Um, with sustainable mobility, taking the lead on bringing together the key partners within that work. So we are working through sort of what that looks like, appreciating that everybody does have a role to play and that there's um, lots of opportunities uh, to promote this work and lots that can be done. So uh, we're working right now. Um, I didn't speak to this, but one of the th key pieces of work moving ahead for the 2023-2024 school year is a pilot in Ward 9, which came through uh, Council uh, and Councillor Clark put a motion forward. And so we will be working with the DSR and are currently putting together an agreement. Um, or not we, and by we, I'm transportation planning and public health, but transportation planning taking the lead is uh, working with the city solicitor to put together an agreement for the DSR that would outline um, how the program could work in this 
through this pilot in Ward 9, um, which would involve a close collaboration between, uh, in terms of planning and what that would look like between the DSR and the city. Um, so I'm, uh, we haven't had those planning discussions yet, so I can't speak to any specifics per se, but the intent is that we will be working closely together with and with school boards to outline what that work would be for the school year. And that would be our ideal is that we would work in partnership with the school board to address their priorities, as well as those of um, the, um, the DSR and within the city to address those priorities, both from a um, a school travel planning perspective. So not only doing the school travel planning, engaging with the school community, assessing the needs around the schools, both from a, uh, an education awareness uh, engagement perspective, but also from an infrastructure perspective. So also looking at infrastructure improvements that can be made to the right of way um, and any supportive pieces that can be done um, with respect to that as well too. So we will be working closely on both ends. Um, through that through that partnership and that school travel planning process. Thank you, Councillor Beatty. Perfect, thank you. Um, great to hear, and I'm I'm looking forward to the work that will be done in Ward Nine. I know Ward Ten just completed um, a similar process with DSR, and uh, some invaluable work done there. Um, you mentioned um, supporting things like um, you know offering some resources for things like uh, walk and roll mm -hmm. um, was mentioned. Um, I, I just wanted to maybe hone in on that a little more specifically because I do have a, a school that I've been working with here in the ward uh, when I was trustee for the area. Now as counselor in collaboration with my uh, my uh, my colleague uh, trustee White um, from the HWDSB lens. Um, they run a very robust walk and wheel program in June, and I'm just trying to uh, maybe tease out what uh, what additional resources could be available to them and how they would go about accessing them. Because uh, you know, knowing that they're already doing some of this, how can we just uh, plus it up a little? Absolutely, through you, the chair. Um, our so the school travel. Um, coordinator within transportation planning, uh, sustainable mobility group. There are resources um, that can be done. We can offer promotional items for schools. They can do an in-person sort of event um, and that sort of thing. And there are a number of communications, uh, I believe that our team did put out through social media that could be that the school could also leverage for promoting that event. Um, I think the best thing is for them to reach out to our coordinator. Um, uh, who I can certainly get you the contact information for that. Um, I don't want to, I always screw up the general email address, so I don't want to do that here. And so what I can do is follow up with you with that general email address that can be shared with the school um, and they can definitely connect over those events. We do have walk, um, uh, walk and roll days three times throughout the year. So fall, spring, and then as you mentioned, the one in June, our summer one. So I can definitely make that connection. Excellent. Thank you. And and um, I will definitely, uh, if if in general, and and I'm trying not to be too word specific, so I'm I'm throwing this out that you know any any trustee or or counselor uh, listening or watching, uh, Heather, would you be kind of like a if somebody contacted you and said, hey, can you connect me with the coordinator? Would that be appropriate? Uh, just as a as a triage, if you will. Uh, certainly. And as I said, I am happy to share. Um the general email address as well, but I can certainly act as a conduit for that. Absolutely. Wonderful. And lastly, through uh, you, Chair Danko, um, you mentioned the, the, some of the listings of the schools. I know previously there was a like a, a master list of all the schools that are participating in the ASD program. And I'm wondering if that is uh, still around, if it's a public document and if it's ever uh, where, where we may find it just so that we could, uh, you know, as community leaders look in and say, oh, the, maybe there's a, a school that would benefit from the program that we may be able to assist with, or we may look and go, oh, it's already on the list and they're already working with you. Uh, if that's uh, something that can be found. 
Uh, through the chair, uh, we have actually engaged with and done at least preliminary school travel plans at most elementary schools within uh, HWDSB. There are a few, I think, that we haven't, but most have had at least an initial school travel plan. So we have engaged with schools in that way. Um, in terms of a list, I'm not sure that there is a list that is publicly available, but I can take that back um, to staff and see if we can. Um, if that would be helpful, provide um, provide a list of sort of an update for the various schools and where those are at. That's wonderful. Thank you. No further questions. Thank you, Councillor Beatty. Are there any further comments or questions? And I'm seeing one in the room, Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Chair Danko. I appreciate the opportunity as a guest to uh, ask a question on this. Um, Long been interested, but uh, a lot of ignorance for me on terms of the bureaucratic landscape of who does what. So I think I heard from um, Ms. Harvey that the active school transportation is rooted in the city. It's provided and housed, funded by the Sustainable Mobility Group and that public health works closely with transportation planning and mobility. Is is it possible uh, or do we have an account of um, how much is budgeted uh, for uh, the oversight of this committee, its planning, and then the execution of any plans that come forward? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Through you, the chair, um, I, do, I would have to go back and consult on that given that an, some of this budget is housed within the planning department and not within healthy and safe communities or public health um, and would have to would have to consult with my um, colleagues on that. I am not aware that there is a specific. Um, yeah, I would have to go back and consult with them on that to get that information for you. Thank you. Councillor Wilson, follow up. Thank you. I'm, I'm asking um, always not to trip anybody up, but in order for us, I think if it is a said priority, mobility, health, um, also within a climate lens, if we were able to weave together some sort of um, opportunity to reveal uh, collectively, uh, if, if, if in fact it is a priority of ours, whether we're affording this the necessary resources um, to the initiative. Thank you, I would appreciate that. The second question I have is just understanding roles and responsibilities. Um, it was noted that we have eight school travel plans that we're following up with, uh, six school requests. My ignorance, who at the board is responsible for the oversight of, of this? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, I'll turn to you, Director Robinson Petazzini. Uh, thank you for the question and through the chair, uh, that would be Jerry Smith, superintendent. Thank you. Thank Any you. further follow-up, Councillor Wilson? There is. Uh, thank you. So if uh, just trying to understand further, Chair, the, the landscape of how much of this is informed by corporate policy and how much is, of this is informed uh, by the interest of a, a particular school. Um, the reason I'm asking always is within uh, also the framework of equity. equity. Uh, we have certain neighbors, hoods, uh, whether due to income or language or otherwise, um, uh, that um, in terms of their hierarchy of needs, while the need is there, the resources may be not. And if we leave it to the independent school just to champion, it, it, it may be a, not particularly equitable. So I am just trying to understand what, what standard and what carriage is provided by Mr. Smith in this advocacy uh, and the identification of need. Thank you, those are my questions. Uh, thank you. Director, are you able to respond? Uh, through the chair, I can respond, I can attempt to respond. I do know that this uh, past school year would have been the first time that this was um, uh, under the supervision of uh, Superintendent Smith. So I know that he's uh, fairly new to the portfolio and is, uh, you know, learning along the way. I know that um, 
uh, we are always, obviously at the school board, always looking at how we can provide better access, especially um, around equity. And we do understand a number of different factors that go into ensuring that our schools have equitable access to services and programs. I do know that um, we do uh, promote the program and that we will continue to do so. But I think that there is still ongoing work in the collaboration uh, with the city for Superintendent Smith. Thank you. Thank you. And I might be able to add, um, having met with the, the group that's working on daily school routes and Superintendent Smith, that uh, part of what we've experienced over the pandemic was a, a shift in focus. And so some of our our uh, connections at the city, um, in particular through public health for ASST, um, were redeployed. And so I would say that we were eager to be sort of reinvigorating the focus on active transportation. Um, and uh, I appreciate Superintendent Smith's work on that, but it is uh, definitely a work in progress. Any further follow up, Councillor Wilson? Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Ms. Harvey. Uh, through you, Chair, just to add, uh, I would say that health equity is definitely a key focus of us here within public health moving forward around this work. And it is something that we are looking to prioritize in collaboration with the school board when identifying our schools that we'll work with um, moving forward into future school years, appreciating that we are also still trying to be responsive to those uh, school-based requests that are coming in for schools that have identified a, a particular interest and need, but did want to mention that um, equity and health equity is a key priority for us here at Public Health moving forward as we look to identify work for 2023-2024 school year. Thank you. Are there any further questions or comments relating to this item? I'll just add a, a question myself. Uh, you did mention that daily school routes was part of the work going forward and uh, you know I was excited to hear about the proposed um, opportunities that we have to identify and actually assign specific routes to school. Um, we know that when we have more students walking a given route uh, it, it can feel safer and encourage again uh, more active transportation. Um, so is there explicit work that's happening on this? Do we have uh, timelines for when we might start to see the outcome? comes of the, the planning for daily school routes? Uh, thanks for that question to the chair. Uh, my understanding is that we are hoping for the Ward 9 pilot to begin this coming school year. So my hope is that we will start to see that work commence uh, shortly after the start of the school year. Um, and from that, we would be able to um, continue our planning and, and moving forward in terms of specific actions related to um, the outcomes of those initial surveys and walkabouts at the school um, and any issues that are identified. Thank you. I know we have some some definite interest at the board. Uh, so I know that if we can roll that out further, that would be really beneficial for our various school communities. Uh, my last question is around the link between uh, the ASST work and public transportation. And I'm wondering, uh, we have you know a number of students who receive bus passes as part of the their location relative to their school, uh, particularly for high school. And I know that the city's had a number of initiatives, including uh, $1 Presto uh, fares this summer for students, which is great. Uh, but is there any connection or collaboration with uh, public transportation? We know that one of the ways we can encourage active transportation is to also encourage public transportation. Thank you for that question to the chair. Uh, I'm really actually excited about, um, I'm glad you asked this question. I'm excited to share that we do have a city lab project that public health is leading for um, the coming school year. That's working in partnership with Bernie Custis Secondary School to look at um, uh, how to promote active and sustainable school travel for that exact reason. Um, so that's the, what sort of this another take on sustainable is not just walking or biking or, or rolling, but it's also pub taking public transportation, which is a more sustainable alternative than um, cars when getting to schools. So that project is working with Bernie Custis and looking at opportunities um, 
and uh, possibilities to promote ASST to secondary schools, uh, of which some of that would be promoting the uh, HSR, of course. So. Um, I did mention that the primary uh, programs responsible for ASST within the city are transportation planning, the sustainable mobility group, and within public health, my team and chronic disease prevention. However, we do partner with others within the city, such as roadway safety, um, and this would also be the HSR. So we aren't currently involved with HSR per se on um, partnering closely with them in this work because typically we've looked at uh, elementary school students um, but this, with this opportunity in secondary schools, um, we will be looking to uh, reach out to the HSR and work with them and look at opportunities, I imagine, depending on what comes out of that city lab work. Thank you. That sounds, that sounds exciting. Okay, just doing one last check. Are there any further questions or comments? And I'm not seeing any, uh, I don't see specific direction uh, being suggested. There's been a few requests for, for information and connections. Um, I'm wondering if the committee would like to have regular updates uh, or, or reports back, um, perhaps on a biannual basis. Is that something that the committee would be interested in and would we, we would need a motion for that? I'm not seeing any, so in the absence of that direction, Jesse Todd? Yeah, if I can, reach, I would be happy to make that motion. And so that would be a motion to have uh, updates on ASST work uh, on a biannual basis, so I'd need a seconder for that. Uh, thank you, Councillor Beatty. And again, voting in the negative, is anyone opposed? And I have to just double check. Uh, Councillor Tadison, I'm just letting you know you're on my second screen, so I can't always see you, <laughs> but feel free to, to make some noise if I seem to have missed you for anything. Uh, so that carries, thank you so much. Item 13.3 is the City of Hamilton update on agreements with the Hamilton Wentworth District School Board for shared use of properties. Um, we don't have a report for that, so it's a verbal update, but who can I turn to to begin this discussion? Oh, I'm going to start with Chris Herstek. Please go ahead. Through the chair, um, uh, over the last number of years, we've been working closely with uh, uh, Dave Anderson, senior manager of facilities with the school board, to uh, inventory all of the sites that have either a school board amenity and a city amenity. And um, through that process, we've identified who the asset owner is and if there's an agreement in place. And uh, over the last uh, couple of years, we've identified if there's an agreement in place, uh, the agreement needs to be renewed or there is not an existing agreement. And that's what we've been prioritizing is to complete those agreements. And to date, we have completed about 80% of the required agreements for the joint sites and the amenities that we share. Thank you. Um, Senior Manager Anderson, is there anything you wanted to add on this topic? Thank you, and through the chair. So just to echo uh, Chris's comments, uh, staff, on uh, both the board side and, and city side continue to uh, meet regularly. Um, one of our pieces, uh, uh, JPAC, uh, hasn't met since uh, October, I think, 2022, um, but staff still continue to meet regularly outside of that uh, that forum uh, with an uh, expectation to, uh, to close that gap with the remaining 20% uh, of locations. Uh, some of the roadblocks that we've uh, come across, though, and this may be a new business item. I may, may be jumping the queue a little bit, but we we do uh, hit some stumbling blocks. Uh, for example, uh, GL Armstrong, uh, the new park structure, and some of the uh, waste collection uh, pieces um, have been discussed at JPAC, um, but haven't been finalized yet. So uh, while the agreements are underway, uh, there are pieces that do need to be finalized um, and working through legal on both sides as well does take some time. So we continue to uh, update uh, as best we can through the chair. Thank you. I'll turn to committee members and, and others that have joined us. Uh, any questions or comments? Councillor Beatty. Getting too fast on the draw there. Um, I, I, I just want to say thank you to um, facilities group on both sides of the table for their continued work on this. I was going to ask a 
question uh, that was word specific, but it was already answered for me uh, through through proper channels. So I, I don't have to go about doing that. But just to signal on a high level the importance of some of these shared use agreements, particularly when you have a school site adjacent to a, a city owned asset, a park or something like that, the benefit of having access to these uh, additional spaces for the students is uh, excellent. And, um, you know, historically, uh, some of these schools were initially designed, uh, you know, with the uh, forethought of having access to uh, city amenities as part of their programming. So uh, I would just encourage that we can get as much of this done and uh, break down some of the barriers so that students can have uh, access to additional green space, additional opportunities for physical activity and, uh, you know, kids being kids exploring um, the great outdoors. Particularly, um, what I have noticed is sometimes as the school sites grow and we had uh, portables, um, it actually shrinks the footprint of the uh, the green space available for students. So uh, it would be particularly important to try to, on both sides, you know, city and, and board to try to iron some of these things out so that we can uh, have a, a seamless play space and seamless green space available for student benefit. So that's just a, a high level comment. Glad to see that we're working on it. And uh, if there's anything that, um, you know, as a council member that, that I or my colleagues could do to expedite or help, uh, please reach out and let us know. Thank you, Councillor Beattie. Any further questions or comments? And not seeing any, I'll just uh, sort of echo just uh, Councillor Beattie's comments, uh, you know, the, the value of having school board and city properties either shared or adjacent or that uh, we can allow our students to really truly take advantage of the green space that's available in the city. Uh, I appreciate the work of, of staff uh, on both sides to, to come to agreement uh, for some of our shared spaces. I know since I've become a trustee, uh, that's been a work in progress and it, we've seen the benefits of having those agreements um, renewed or, or updated, uh, particularly with respect to snow clearing, that's really really helped reduce uh, areas of concern uh, where, where perhaps it wasn't uh, done in a timely manner and created safety concerns. Um, so in, in terms of the, the joint committee, I heard from Senior Manager Anderson, uh, the, the Joint City Staff Committee, sorry, HWDSB Staff Committee um, meets regularly, but since last October they have not met, uh, and city staff and board staff continue to work on these um, agreements. Uh, does the joint city and board staff committee report up to this committee, uh, just to get some clarity on that framework? Mr. Through the Mr. chair, uh, that's correct. Uh, th this committee uh, receives the minutes from the JPAC uh, meetings of, of staff. I should say it's a joint property agreements committee. Thank you. I was trying to pull a name out of my head and couldn't think of it. Um, so we would expect that when the next meeting happens, minutes would report up. Thank you. Through the chair, that's correct. Okay. Are there any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, I'm just taking a peek in the room. Uh, at this point, those are the, the three items that we had on our agenda, so just want to uh, have a look for a motion to receive the information from today. Thank you, Councillor Beatty. I need a seconder. Uh, and thank you. I'm going to go to Councillor Tattison since he's on my screen this time. Uh, and again, we'll vote in the negative. Is anyone opposed? Thank you. That carries. Okay. Um, we are coming to the end of our agenda. Is there any other business that uh, we would like to bring forward today? Uh, sorry, Councillor McMeekin, go ahead. Thanks, uh, Chair Danko. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to, uh, to join uh, and to learn a little bit about what's happening. and. Uh, to uh, stand in solidarity with my two esteemed colleagues who are formal members of this, uh, this group, um, both with a great background in education and uh, public service. And uh, they'll uh, uh, 
things will augur well for the committee. Uh, um, I wanted to uh, to come today uh, and um, make a suggestion. I, I've had the privilege uh, in what seems now like a previous lifetime to have uh, to have served as the parliamentary assistant uh, provincially to three different ministers of education, and as you you may. Uh, May know was quite active um, in terms of advocating for schools, uh, both in my own writing and throughout the city when I had some cabinet responsibilities. Um, great relationship um, between, uh, I like to think, between the government of the day and the, and the various school boards that we were privileged to partner with. Um, that having been said, I have a concern about where we, where, where we may be heading. Um, the, uh, there are parts of our community that are growing very, very quickly, um, and, and uh, I, I, you know, it's said if you can't take care of your own backyard, you can't take care of anybody else's. So let me just talk about Ward 15 in particular. Um, it's the fastest growing part of the city. There are some enormous pressures. Um, continuing pressures around the need for new schools. I know the uh, both school boards have been active in terms of uh, advocacy uh, with the provincial government. Um, I, I think from from the perspective of our, of our community and coming out of the community council meeting we recently had, we've gathered 40, 40 key community leaders to meet periodically. There's a real sense that uh, uh, they would like to see uh, this partnership between the city and the various school boards really strengthened and that when it comes time to advocating particularly for school renewal and new schools that uh, that we can form a uh, a solidarity column uh, of uh, support that will uh, push hard uh, uh, provincially. I, I uh, recall uh, specifically a number of concerns uh, from Penny Deeth, former trustee, and others in the community that I'm privileged to represent uh, about the uh, new school in Southeast Waterdown. Talk about equity and diversity, what a very large uh, um, uh, and diverse community there. Um, uh, being a very high priority, perhaps even the number one priority, I'm not exactly sure, but let, let me hazard a guess that is very high, uh, being uh, rejected uh, uh, by the, uh, 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 for funding by the current provincial government. I, I don't think uh, if we're about the task jointly of building strong, livable communities, um, we can do anything else but work strongly together. And I want to, to come today just to share that share the uh, very, very real concern in my community. Mary Hopkins is another school, by the way, desperately in need of uh, uh, a retrofit, um, maybe even a tear down and a rebuild, I don't know, but that's that's above my pay grade at the moment. So I share that and uh, want to pledge, um, 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 along with uh, um, situations in similar parts of our community, my support and, uh, and commitment to work as actively as I can and to be an advocate uh, with my colleagues uh, who won't need much advocacy on this because I think there's broad-based agreement that this is a, a priority. Um, John F. Kennedy once said, uh, the best measure of our progress as a nation is our progress in education. He was right in 62 and he's uh, right in uh, 2023. And uh, you know those uh, those uh, communities and nations that out-educate us are going to outperform us, and in so many ways. So I think this is a uh, for me a number one priority, something we really need to bear down on, and uh, and we just can't, uh, um, we must not allow things to be put off, um, so that uh, our our community becomes discernibly less as a result. So. That's my sermon for the day, and I just want to let you know I really care a lot, as I know everybody around this room does, and want to work together um, collaboratively and as, as forcefully as we can to make sure that the needs of our community, and particularly our kids, are uh, met. Thanks. Uh, 
Thank you, Councillor McMeekin. And I know that working, we are working with the ministry and have identified both um, Waterdown and Binbrook as priorities, uh, particularly because of the enrollment pressures and, and the growth in those areas. But I know we would certainly appreciate any support the city can offer. Um, working in partnership is, is really critical. I do see two hands up from, from fellow committee members. I believe I saw Councillor Tattison first, and then I'll come to you, Councillor Beattie. Councillor Tattison. Councillor Dango, thank you for mentioning Bimbrook. We seem to be on the back burners out there in the south of Hamilton. Um, we do need a school and we do have a thousand homes coming to that area where that new school is to be built. So again, thank you for mentioning that and that you're working hard. One of the questions I did have is the board, does the board, I guess, or the city, does anyone have any um, opinion or did we release any statement of, you know, discontent with the fact that Mohawk College closed its educational assistance program for this year? Uh, thank you. I can speak on behalf of the board. Um, we have not publicly indicated um, our concern, uh, but of course, one of the, the biggest challenges we have right now is uh, recruitment and retention of educational assistance. So uh, it is disappointing to see that that program not continue for this year locally. And uh, I know that staff have updated us to say that we are looking to make sure that we're connecting with other colleges to, um, with, with programs that are active because uh, it is such an important need. But I'll turn to the director um, for HWDSB, no, no further comment? Okay. Okay, through the chair, that would have been my comment. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, thank you. And I do have Associate Director Gerard, if you'd like to add comment. Uh, through you, Chair, this is in response to Councillor uh, McMeekin's um, uh, comments and questions. Is that appropriate now? Yes, I apologize if you may not have shown up on my screen. Uh, so please go ahead. Thank you. And uh, through you, Chair, thank you to the Councillor for the question and, and the comment and the support. Um, we, uh, we do note the, the two, two schools where we are advocating with, uh, uh, with the ministry and with other, uh, other partners to make sure that we can move forward with school builds to address the, uh, the increase in enrollment. Um, uh, we are currently working with the ministry, as was mentioned, to, uh, to move the Southeast Waterdown project forward. Uh, I do want to mention that um, we will be engaging in the boundary study process for uh, Mary Hopkins in the fall time. Um, and that will be a short-term solution that will hopefully help to bridge us to, um, to the long-term solution, which is the additional new school in Southeast Waterdown that will uh, continue to exist alongside Mary Hopkins, which, um, which is a, a building that is much needed to support our enrollment in those areas. Um, so thank you for raising the issue and thank you for any support that can be offered. Thank you for that additional uh, information. Just back to Councillor Tattison, did you have any follow-up? No, I think I'm good. Thank you for answering those questions and thanks to the director. Thank you. Councillor Beattie. Thank you, and through you, Chair. Uh, first off, I, I'd like um, I'd like to hear more of that accent at council meetings, uh, Councillor McMeekin. If you wouldn't mind bringing that out a little more frequently. I think it would add some badly needed levity at times. Um, I remember touring uh, Mary Hopkins School with uh, Trustee uh, Penny Deeth back in my service as uh, Vice Chair of the Board, and that was a few years ago. And um, it's um, you know, disheartening to hear that we're still still waiting and waiting. I'm wondering through your chair, um, and maybe I would ask um, this of uh, um, our legislative coordinator in the room, if it would be appropriate for a motion to come from this body uh, forward, uh, that council perhaps may send a, a letter of support if it hasn't already uh, for the the funding of these two schools badly needed in high growth areas, if that would be uh, something that would be of benefit, uh, if it hasn't already been done, and if this would be the appropriate time or if there's an ability to make a motion to that effect. Uh, thank you. I'll just check with Associate Director Gerard uh, to see what work has been done with the city or if we see um, the opportunity for the city to send a letter of support as a, an opportunity. 
Thank you. And through you, Chair, just for, for clarity, uh, Southeast Waterdown, we're looking for funding from the ministry to support the building of the school. We own the land in Binbrook. Um, we don't own the land, but we have funding from the ministry for the school. Um, so if there was a letter to be to be offered, it would be in support of the uh, Southeast Waterdown School. Uh, wonder if and uh, wonder if that might be attached to the upcoming capital priority process that hopefully the ministry will be enacting soon. And that, that is the source by which we would receive funding for, for a new school building. Thank you. Yeah, that I think narrows it down and, and I can speak to the fact that again, at the time back in 2017, perhaps, um, when I was out there with uh, Trustee Deeth at the time, and at that time, this is now six years ago, uh, there was a very intense need for the construction of the school. And here we are six years later, and we're, we're still in the same boat. Um, aligning with your next capital submission, uh, Associate Director Gerard, um, I, I, again, coming back to the fact if it's appropriate for this body to make a recommendation so that mayor and council would send a letter of support in conjunction with your capital submission. Um, yeah, I'm just looking to uh, the LC in the room to um, perhaps give guidance on how best we may support you. Thank you. Uh, so it sounds as though uh, it, it could be beneficial to have a letter of support from the city, perhaps uh, also outlining some of the, the demographic shifts that, that result in our need for that new school for the upcoming capital priority submission. Um, so it would, I would be looking to the committee, noting this isn't a formal agenda item. I think it would be important that uh, we, we look to waive the rules uh, to, to put that motion on the floor. Um, so I'd be looking for a motion to waive the rules uh, for notice, and then we can enter entertain that motion. Thank you, Trustee Tut, putting a uh, motion to waive the rules. Thank you, Trustee Beatty, that seconded. Uh, is anyone opposed? Seeing none. Seeing none, thank you. That carries. And then to your motion, Trustee Beatty, if you just want to state that so that we can write it down clearly. Sure. Uh, as best I can, and um, Elsie Bates can uh, assist with uh, Kohler. Sorry. LC Kohler is in the room, I believe. I can't can't see you all the way at the end of the table there. Um, if you can fine tune it a little bit, uh, my intent is um, that this committee rec make a recommendation to council for a letter of support for the construction of a new Southeast Waterdown School. Sorry, for funding for construction of Southeast Waterdown School. Uh, and that this letter of support would coincide with HWDSB's next round of capital project submissions. It's Lorraine Kohler from the, the clerk's office. Thank you very much, Councillor Beatty. I'll ask you to back it up just slowly. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen so that everyone can see me typing and see the language of the motion before you. So just give me a moment. Uh, no problem. I was, I was almost all the way there, but hang on. I know I started talking slowly and then I sped up as I was talking. I apologize. <laughs> well, because the ideas were there. So that's that's absolutely fine. Just give me a second. I'll make this look a little bigger. So I left you at New School in, it was the Southeast Waterdown. Southeast Waterdown. Yes, and continue. To correspond with HWDSBs. Next round, Next round of, of capital, capital project submissions. And I'll just make sure that uh, Matt Gerard is uh, okay with, I've got the wording right. And can everyone see that clearly on the screen? Okay. If anyone is raising their hand in the WebEx, I'm not able to see them because I am sharing the screen. So you can, oh, okay. <laughs> And so thank you, Trust or Councillor Beatty. I knew I was gonna slip up at least once. Um, it is our capital priorities submissions, but I think the, the, the language is, is fine as is. Um, I'd like to try to get it as accurate as I could. So we can do capital priority submissions. I'm a little rusty on some of the terminology. I changed it. Okay, thank you. So we have the, the motion 
Moved by Councillor Beatty. Uh, do I have a seconder? Uh, thank you, Trustee Tut. Any further comments or discussion on the item? Sure. Before before we vote on it, I just want to make sure that this is intended as direction that uh, Marin Council will send this letter of support. I don't know if it needs to have specific wording in the correspondence that Marin Council. Thank you. So would it perhaps be that we recommend that the Mayor and Council, thank you mm -hmm. for that clarification. And uh, I see Councillor McMeekin. Yes, uh, thanks Thanks uh, very much, uh, Chair Danko. And uh, um, fellow Councillor Beatty, thank you for that uh, initiative. I just want to pause to, uh, to say that uh, this is, um, I don't want to uh, ignore the request out of Binbrook either. That's uh, it's just as important as uh, Southeast Waterdown. So I, I just flagged that. The other thing I would I, I want to say is this is this is a good start. Um, however, um, I, I think there is more than just sending a letter. I I think I think we need to be all in on this with this current government and. Uh, if that means uh, sending a joint delegation down to meet with the minister or whatever it takes, uh, uh, I'd like to think that you could count council in uh, and uh, to join in solidarity with uh, uh, this, your, your school board and any other school board that's facing a similar need uh, to make sure that uh, this is taken care of. So I, I flag that and just to reference Binbrook in passing because my good friend, uh, Councillor Tattison is uh, fighting the good fight up there as well. Thank you. Thank you, and I see this as a great starting point. Um, I do want to just reiterate that for Binbrook, we do have funding from the ministry, so it really is about yeah. gaining, <laughs> just purchasing the land. For the, uh, yes, we have funding for a school that we can't build because we need the land, and we are asking for funding for a school that we could build. Um, but but both are, are significant priorities, and we know that. Um, so thank you for the additional suggestion, and we can maybe take that offline um, to find other ways to advocate to the ministry together but to the motion on the floor um, so we have that moved by trustee Beatty with the updated language that is specific to council and the mayor um, that was seconded by trustee Tut any other comments or discussion seeing none uh, anyone opposed and that carries thank you Okay, are there any other, or is there any other business? Councillor Beatty. I'm sorry, Councillor Beatty, go ahead. Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm pent up after not being involved in this for so many years. So um, with regards specifically to the, uh, the Bimbrick problem, uh, where we have uh, funding for a school, but no land, uh, digging back into my memory data bank, I seem to recall that often in uh, development areas, uh, the board is waiting for a particular parcel of land to be properly partitioned and registered and made available to the board for sale. It's likely already, if, and I'm thinking this is probably the maybe the Fletcher Road site is what we're talking about. Um, I see some nodding. Um, so if it's a matter of we have a school site that's identified, it's probably part of a secondary plan. It's It's, you know, You've got the funding. We're just waiting for the property to be made available for the board to purchase. First off, just uh, through you, Chair, uh, to Associate Director Gerard, if or or perhaps um, Mr. Anderson, um, if if I've got that correct, is that what is transpiring right now? Thank you. Um, sorry, I'll just go to uh, Senior Manager Anderson, please. Uh, so through the chair, thank you for the question and thank you for the reference of Mr. Anderson. Uh, not a meeting with it, with you, Councillor. Um, so the, the land is not yet registered. So the developer is working with the city to work through their uh, uh, engineering design uh, and uh, and looking to see that registered in uh, 2024. But we will uh, or have started to begin discussions with the developer for the actual purchase price as well through the chair. Thank you. Follow up, Councillor Beatty. Yeah, certainly. Uh, through you to uh, Senior Manager Anderson. Um, it strikes me that this is a common theme where we have a school site that is 
very well identified, well in advance, part of secondary plans that have been on the books for several years, possibly decades. And the community has been built all around it in some cases. And now we're just waiting for that final piece where the developer makes it available and, and partitions and registers the, the property for sale. It seems like we get tripped up on this and I'm thinking to the Nash neighborhood in Upper Stony Creek and possibly others where um, this seems to be a reoccurring theme. Um, when we look ahead and I'm looking into uh, the future in my own ward, uh, when the Fruitland Winona secondary plan begins to get shovels in the ground, there will there is a school site identified there. There is no capacity that I would understand in uh, the current Winona school or any of the adjacent schools to handle any additional student traffic. And of course, I'm, I'm speaking out of turn because it's not my wheelhouse. That would be uh, Trustee White that would have the, the knowledge base better. But with that said, I would hate to end up in a similar position where we have neighborhoods fully flushed out and built and the schools are the last to be constructed. And I'm just, I'm curious, and I don't know if there's anyone from planning and economic development uh, available that may be able to answer, if there is something that could be done on the city's end to help in some way expedite this process to make these, um, these properties partitioned and available for purchase by the school board in a more expedient manner, knowing that there's, um, what do you call it, the educational development charges, um, that the, the board has the money, they're ready to go. You can make these purchases relatively quickly. It's it's just these final legal pieces in terms of partitioning the land that are tripping us up. Is there anybody in the room that might be able to offer a suggestion on the city's end that might help? Thank you, Councillor Beatty. I wonder, Darlene Cole, is this something that you might be able to respond to? Through the chair, Darlene Cole, acting manager of real estate. Normally through the planning process, um, which starts many years before, uh, there are several iterations of a plan that are put forward and the planners need to consider and then the developer needs to identify what might be available to the city for um, municipal uses. I would suggest that perhaps in the in the early stages of the planning process, maybe the school lands be identified early on and then funds be uh, ready for severance and acquisition. Usually severance is done with the registration of an uh, of an M plan or a registered plan. So the severance takes place automatically with the registration of the plan. So the developer in the, in the case where you wanted to um, sever earlier, he would then be faced with costs of severance. So that might be one hurdle for the developer. However, if we identify what's needed and start ahead of time to uh, prepare for valuation and of course, uh, preparation of a plan. If the city registers the plan under the Planning Act, we have automatic severance privileges under the, it's called crown right. Okay, um, that's informative. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Darlene, much appreciated. I'm just, I'm going to maybe flag this kind of publicly that it's an area of concern of mine. My observation is that often the identified lands that are uh, going to be a new school site are often left to the very end and used as some kind of a marshalling yard or construction yard. Um, we, you know, you'll see piles of uh, gravel and construction trailers and uh, materials stored on that site until near the end of the construction process. Um, and then those lands are made available at the very end and it would be advantageous, I think for all, um, for the school board to have these uh, lands made available so that they can start the process of obtaining provincial funding, as well as to get these schools built more quickly leads to more walkable neighborhoods, leads to uh, complete neighborhoods, and, and, and in fact would be a selling feature for the developer um, to help their process as well. So I think anything that we can do to help get these lands uh, partitioned, parceled, made available to the school board, uh, for a quick acquisition so that they can start their very lengthy and arduous process of obtaining the proper funding. Uh, you know, it's a win-win-win if we can try to make this happen. So I, I'll just, I'll leave that open. Um, and um, if, if staff think of any brilliant ideas that uh, might help us, uh, I think uh, 
we'd be very eager to hear uh, at a future meeting, either through this process or through uh, our, our planning committee or, or such a venue. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Beattie. Okay, any other business for our meeting today? I just want to raise uh, one question for committee members. Um, typically, this committee is scheduled to meet as required. Um, we've identified at least one thing that we would like to come to the committee biannually, but I would just like to sort of survey the committee members to see when we would hope to meet next so that we, we don't uh, see lengthy gaps in our meeting schedule. Can Councillor Beattie? And sorry for keep putting up my hand. Um, I'm wondering if it's possible to look at a quarterly meeting as opposed to a biannual, uh, be it that we, I think, have some ground to make up for. Um, I'd be interested in uh, having something scheduled towards the, you know, in the fall uh, where we can maybe um, review any uh, anything that may arise uh, from, from uh, September startup um, and then move into the winter and summer months, you know, three, four meetings a year, I think would be appropriate, but I, I'll throw that out to my other colleagues to see what their thoughts are. Thank you. Um, It'd certainly be in support of that, and we don't need a formal motion. It just helps our, our Lorraine with, with scheduling. Uh, but just looking to Trustee Tutt and Councillor Tattison, uh, you know, would you be in agreement with that frequency of meeting? Seeing a thumbs up. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Chair Danko. I just, just given uh, what I've heard today uh, in terms of the makeup and the issues going forward, uh, I, I like the synergy and the ideas that are being shared here. And I think um, I, I think it just makes sense for us to have uh, that quarterly meeting to make sure that, uh, you know, some of these items don't don't fall off the off the agenda, given the needs in the city and in the school board. So absolutely, I'd be in favor of that. Thank you. Thank you. So we've made a note of that. And of course, we welcome uh, trustees and counselors to join us as non-voting um, participants as needed. And uh, oftentimes our meetings are during the school day. So we may or may not be able to have our students members join us, but uh, hopefully we can coordinate so that that might be possible. Uh, if there isn't any other business, I'm not seeing any hands, then I will be looking for a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Councillor Tattison. Do I have a seconder? Trustee Beattie, you were really slow on the hand, so I'm going to go to Trustee Tut. <laughs> you really don't want this meeting to be over yet. <clears throat> and again, voting in office, uh, we're going to a negative vote, so please let me know if you're opposed to adjourning. Seeing none, uh, that ends our meeting. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thank you to staff for joining us and providing your support today, and thank you for your engagement to uh, everyone who's been able to join us. Thank you, Chair. Have a you, great rest of the day.